Welcome to Histories, a special series on Beyond the Text. I'm Samuel Woodall, your guide through the intricate tapestry of human thought. From ancient Greek philosophy to the revolutionary enlightenment, join me as we unravel the epochs that shaped our understanding. In each episode, we'll explore the profound insights of influential thinkers, from classical wisdom to the complexities of the modern era. Histories is not just a podcast, it's an invitation to reflect on the questions that have shaped our world. Buckle up for a journey through intellectual evolution. This is Histories, where past meets present and the echoes of great minds resonate through time. Hello, history aficionados. Welcome to the first episode of Histories Beyond the Text. I'm your host, Samuel Woodall, and today, with the guidance of Dr. Martha Vandry, we are delving deep into the fascinating era known as the Enlightenment. This period holds a special place in my intellectual journey, a time of awe-inspiring transformation in thinking, lifestyle, and engagement with culture. Yet, as we unravel the layers of this era, we'll also explore the complexity beneath the homogenized periodization questioning traditional narratives and venturing into the diverse intellectual approaches that shape our understanding of the Enlightenment. Before we step into the Enlightenment, we have to lay a groundwork. The pre-Enlightenment era was dominated by a scholastic education system anchored in Aristotelian texts that organised knowledge. Latin was prioritised over deep philosophical understanding with a focus on mathematics and theology. The Jesuits then emerged as educators, and figures like Ignatius Loyola stood against alternative religious incursions. Enter here James Usher and his young earth creation theory, which reflects a milieu where even Newton could only suggest the earth's existence to a time of 4000 BC. Emerging from this landscape, the early Enlightenment unfolds with John Locke's A Letter Concerning Toleration in 1689. Locke contends that tolerance is a Christian virtue, opposing the intertwining of state and church. Meanwhile, Descartes' meditation in 1641 may surprise us as he concludes with God. This reliance on a deity, however, vindicates Descartes' famous phrase, I think, therefore I am, transcending individual relativism through an omnipresent observer, God. Challenging the narrative of prodigies transitioning to a general enlightenment, we meet esoteric scholar John Ogilby. Advocating Christian thought in Adam's ancestors, Ogilby straddles early enlightenment while embracing contemporary trends. This nuanced evolution sets the stage for serious questions on enlightenment and politics, as the encounter with atheistic or irreligious newly discovered peoples sparks a fundamental issue. Not all humans could reach atonement with God. As we dive into the heart of the Enlightenment, the long 18th century unveils a non-linear transformation across art, culture, music, philosophy and politics. Even those rooted in past religious mindsets like Ogilby become pivotal actors in Enlightenment transitions. Explore the paradoxical notion of enlightened despotism through the example of Joseph II of the Holy Roman Empire, a monarch devoted to absolute authority, yet pushing for societal liberalisation. As we navigate this intellectual landscape, we find ourselves at a moment when change is palpable, especially for those educated individuals who dare to know. Immanuel Kant's What is Enlightenment in 1784 encapsulates this spirit, an age urging individuals to think critically, challenging old authorities like unwavering orthodoxy and tradition, sapere ord. The Enlightenment's intellectual fervour is hastened by a revolution in communication, notably the Canal Age and advancements in road building. The printing press, evolving since Gutenberg in 1440, reached its zenith in the 18th century, with nearly a billion pr books produced in Europe. The rise of the Republic of Letters forms a network of writers and thinkers, culminating in Diderot and D'Alembert's Encyclopédie, a transformative work attacked by the traditional authorities. Networks also begin to solidify, with Paris as the epicentre of salon culture, while Edinburgh emerges as a city of thought. 
focused on academic institutions like its university. Scholars such as Adam Smith and David Hume delve into discussions on human nature, positioning Edinburgh as the beating heart of Enlightenment thought. Now, the age of reason is truly unfolding, epitomised by Thomas Paine's work of the same name in 1794. Paine, a Quaker born in England, embraced the Enlightenment ideas while maintaining a nuanced stance on religion. His incarceration in Paris as a supporter of the French Revolution highlights the deep complexities of the era. The text argues for reason over irrationality, but it also reinforces a belief in the divine against the established church. Join me in part two, where we'll explore some more key figures of the Enlightenment, its critiques, and some questions for further research. As we turn our gaze to François-Marie Arouet, better known as Voltaire, we uncover an Enlightenment project that reaches beyond borders. Voltaire acknowledges the East as the origin of Western philosophical traditions, discrediting the myth of a linear trajectory. He emphasises cross-cultural exchange and embraces the idea that different cultures hold significance in the world of ideas. In the world of reason and deism, Immanuel Kant takes the stage. Born in Königsberg, he synthesises earlier schools of thought, blending continental rationalism with English empiricism. Kant delves into metaphysical questions, grappling with the existence of mankind. His creation of the categorical imperative seeks to save us from subjective chaos or pure scepticism. Kant's deontological stance prioritises the ethical rightness of an act over its outcome, yet a moral telos shines through in his conception of the kingdom of ends. As we grapple with Kant's profound theories, we're reminded that the Enlightenment ideals didn't go unquestioned. Michel Foucault, almost two centuries later, challenges Kant's vision in his own What is Enlightenment text. Foucault condemns that the project was a facade, masking the transfer of power into the hands of elites who sought control rather than emancipation. This disagreement sheds light on the complex nature of intellectual history, where diverse perspectives play a crucial role in truly understanding an epoch. As we conclude our journey through the Enlightenment, a period that reshaped the very fabric of thought and society, let's reflect on the profound insights we've uncovered. Our exploration began by unravelling the roots of Enlightenment thinking. We navigated the scholastic system where Latin literacy trumped deep philosophical understanding. Figures like James Usher and his curious proposition served as echoes of a mindset deeply rooted in theological interpretations. Moving into the heart of the Enlightenment, we encountered the writings of John Locke and René Descartes. Locke's advocacy for tolerance as a Christian virtue and Descartes' reliance on God in his philosophical framework underscored the intricate interplay of faith and reason during the early stages of this transformative era. We then took our exploration global, exploring how Enlightenment thinkers like Voltaire appreciated the contributions of Eastern traditions. Immanuel Kant synthesised rationalism and empiricism, laying the groundwork for moral philosophy. However, Michel Foucault's later critique questioned whether the Enlightenment's ideals truly emancipated or served as a cover for the elite's power consolidation. As we consider the impact and legacy of the Enlightenment, questions naturally arise inviting further exploration. How did Enlightenment ideals influence political movements, revolutions, and the emergence of new governance structures? In what ways did societal shifts, influenced by Enlightenment thinking, manifest in education, gender roles, and social hierarchies? 
How did the Enlightenment reshape artistic expressions, literature and cultural attitudes both within Europe and globally? What are the enduring effects of the Enlightenment on power structures, and did it genuinely lead to individual emancipation or reinforce elite control? Thank you for embarking on this intellectual journey through a pivotal period in history. As you continue your exploration, let these questions guide your inquiry. Until next time, keep questioning, keep learning, and keep discovering the intricate intellectual threads that lie beyond the text.